Hi, everybody. I thought I would revisit grid journaling because I wanted to make something that was of the color palette of the holidays, but not overly holiday-ish, uh, so not crafty. In this case, I made my 18 squares by tracing over or tracing around um, a business card that I got from a different artist who uh, makes some really cool watercolor sewing combination mixed media. Um, I'm using red and green today. Colors I normally, well, I normally don't use them together solely red and green because it looks very Christmassy. So I decided to go for it today. Starting off with some China marker, making some shapes, making some lines. I haven't done a grid journal for a while and it was really fun. The nice thing about the grid journal is that you get to try out a ton of different shapes and colors and combinations of things in a very short amount of time. Let's see, I'm gathering green and red. This is when I was trying to figure out what to do first. If I was going to start with paint or start with collage, I decided to start with collage. I've been looking for a reason or a place to use this red tissue paper collage. Um, collage paper, I should say. And I finally found it. I spent more time picking and choosing places to put these um, pages than I probably had to, but it was still really fun. Next time, maybe I'll do one sometime where I just randomly put a bunch of collage pieces down and then try to dig myself out, because I was very uh, intentional about putting these down once I decided what to do. Nothing wrong with that. It's just my approach. But I do think it would be fun too, just to randomly put things down. That's why I like doing those big pages that I cut up into small pieces. I guess that's what that accomplishes the same goal, right? Then I don't know exactly where the collage will end up from a composition perspective and I have to turn it into, into something. You might be able to tell I have a bit of a cold, so I'm sorry. I'm giving off major classic rock DJ vibes here. Thanks for bearing with me. There's something about red, white, and black that makes me happy. Not just because I went to University of Wisconsin, go Badgers, but it, you know, it looks like a peppermint stick or just like the red and white. I just, I love it. I love a good red and white stripe, you see up at the top. Love a good black stripe. There's really nothing that can go wrong <laughs> with a red and white or a black and white stripe, in my opinion. All right, cleaning up some of that, those scraps. Attempting to find some green that very light green is a page from one of my kids' books that just totally fell apart. And these are some tea bags. This is my favorite afternoon tea. I think it's called Refresh Mint. It's a nice peppermint tea. The green felt a little overwhelming at first because it was so, you know, so red and green. It turned me off a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. So I started with the, with the white and black parts of the tea bag and then eased myself into the green. I 
And yes, I've been saving my tea bag wrappers. <laughs> my husband's like, oh, you're saving these? And yes, I am. I'm still getting rid of my cough drop wrappers. At some point, I won't. And at some point, I'll do a video for you guys of, <laughs> full of cough drop wrappers. But alas, I'm sticking with tea bags. Such a great color, and there's so much of it. And they're nice, absorbent, made of absorbent paper, so not too shiny. There's just paper sometimes that just feels good to work with. I don't think I'm alone in there. So if you if you also are very picky about your papers, please give me a shout out on the comments so I know I'm not by myself. Some paper is just so, it just makes me happy. And some paper is just awful. So I've realized that I, I have tons of magazines that I've saved for collage. And I don't often use them because I don't like the paper as much. But I really like um, a good a good Tazo tea bag it has excellent paper. Tissue paper, brilliant. Um, what else is good? Paints paint uh, swatch paper is pretty good too. But for some reason magazines haven't been doing it for me. At least not in this phase perhaps in a little while so I don't know about you guys I can already hear jingle bells There's a lot of red and green here the white does remind me of some snow I'm um, pretty terrible at decorating for holidays I know that there are some especially moms, some moms who decorate for every holiday. Um, I'm not one of them, not because it's anything wrong with it, but because I can't keep up. So I don't, you know, by the time I would get Halloween decorations up, we would be, you know, Christmas would be over. <laughs> so I stick with uh, doing, you know, I have other strengths. My other strengths are, you know, doing art and, um, so I'm not super crafty. I've become more crafty now that my children are young because I'm just trying to fill up time, quite frankly. And they love crafts. So I have been hitting the, you know, the Hobby Lobby um, holiday craft aisle for sure. But this is my ode to Christmas. It's so nice and bright. It does make me happy even though it's very red and green. I thought about that light green and then just put it away. Um, I'm adding some lighter green now just to give some variety in the shade of green. These are some um, of my Neocolor crayons. I love mixing greens together. It just, I don't know. <clears throat> just makes things pop in my opinion and especially with the red I feel like it actually adds something different because of the red I found some olive green just to add a different value and cut some of the sweetness just give it a little a little grit. One thing I like about these is I do like the openness. There's so much white space in them. I continue to fill up the white space, but I love how it feels right here. feels light, feels clean, feels joyful, nothing sad happening here. I 
the darker green that I added is water soluble, so I did go ahead and add some gloss medium to that just to try to set that color. You can see in the upper right hand corner, I left some of the areas where it will smear just because I wanted it to have a lighter, um, a lighter feel, like more like a watercolor. And I'm adding now some Celadon just to, again, add another shade of green. I didn't make a decision as to what compositions I wanted to work on in this grid. I was just doing whatever felt I felt like in each grid or each square. But a lot of them are starting to shape up like landscapes. I thought that was interesting. Trying to add it, I'm using the same tool, but I'm trying to add the paint so that it looks different in each square. Different size, different shape. Some is very opaque, some is more transparent, because I've wiped some of it away. Again, I'm looking for each square to be cohesive with the whole, you know, all 18 squares, but also um, have some contrasting elements as well. So they're cohesive, but they're different. I really am liking the, the square that I'm working on right there. I feel like that one looks, it feels very organic to me. And I really, I just really like it. I like that one a lot too that I'm adding to. Some of them turned out um, unexpectedly um, cool. I always keep my expectations very low. <laughs> when you're dealing with 18, the odds of you loving all 18 are slim, at least for me. But I love the whole group and how eight, all 18 are coming together. And there's some individual squares that I, I like more than others. As long as they're not your children, you can have favorites. So I'm almost done. I'm finishing up adding some white back just to create some more depth in these squares push some things backwards chose to use my finger not sure why <laughs> it's just in that mood
and I wanted to go in and have a bit of a, a bolder impact. So I did get some black and white stripes. So the stripes add a couple things. One, it bumps up the drama. And two, it kind of makes it feel more fun to me. So that's why I like to add them. So whatever it is that you like to add in your paintings, do that. There doesn't have to be a justifiable reason to add things. That's one of my favorite parts about art. <laughs> you can just add what you like because the whole thing is for you to make things that you like, not what someone else likes. If you make it and you like it, that's all that matters, in my opinion. Might be harder to sell those if no one else likes them, but chances are, if you like it, people will like the work that you make because you're the only one who can make it. Adding a little bit of white crayon here, and that's it. I hope you all have the happiest holiday season possible and a wonderful new year. Um, I will be posting, hopefully, and doing a live next week as well. I uh, wish you guys all the best. Take care. Bye.